In this video, we're going to describe a new feature found in Adapt Builder 2019. This is found in the new Dynamic Editor tool, and it's used to generate wall boundary conditions for the purpose of tributaries for design strips. We're going to be using Builder 2019. This is Floor Pro RC mode. This would apply also to RC PT mode, and we're going to demonstrate this on just a very simple uh, model and the purpose of this tool. So I'll go ahead and just set up this model. I'll use the modeling options here. We'll create a slab. We'll make that slab just a little bit larger. We want to have space to model some columns and, and some walls. So I'll go ahead now and model just a few columns. Let me change the spacing of the of the grid. Um, we'll go to a two by two, and we're going to dump in some columns here. Okay, we'll do a. Let's do two more rows of columns. And then we're also going to add some walls. So I'm going to add these walls between uh, frame lines of columns. So we'll add a wall here. I'll add another wall there. And then in the other direction, we'll just do a wall at this point and also at this point. And I will replace this column here with a wall along this path. Okay, so we have this now as our base model. We'll go ahead and save this model. And we're now going to go back to the floor design ribbon. We're going to go to dynamic editor. I'm going to set up some design strips using the new uh, dynamic wizard. So we can just create a construction line through some of these points. I'm not going to include a support line along this path just for purposes of the demonstration. And I will do one along mainly just the column lines. In this direction, I will snap at this wall. That's going to be a support for this direction. Okay, and then the last line will be through this group of columns there. My columns are a little bit small, so it's a little, um, you have to be more precise in creating the construction line. We'll switch this over to Y direction and pass our construction line through that path. I will um, use this wall as a support. Here I'm going to branch this, so I'll go up to this column over. I want this wall to also be a support, something like that. And then I'm just going to start this one here. This will be a support like so. Okay, let's let's just run this one like like this. And then here we'll start this there and then run this up like so. I'm leaving this one also in between these two strips leaving this one in between these two strips to illustrate. So I'll close that. And notice I haven't put any splitters in the model. The, the program no longer requires the use of splitters other than just bounding the edges of a tributary along a specific length. So I can generate my strips here. If I navigate to show my X strips versus my Y strips, these are my X. These are my Y strips, and you can see the program does a nice job of uh, determining the tributaries based on my input. We have this overlap here just based on the orientation of the strip. Um, we're now going to look at boundaries. So we'll go back to Dynamic Editor, Walls, and we do have some default boundary conditions already set for the columns. I'm going to use the user defined um, just to illustrate. So we have no boundary, X and Y boundary, X only and Y only. I'll mainly show no boundary, X only and Y only, and that should help demonstrate X and Y together. This just sets it for both directions. So 
For no boundary, I'm going to go ahead and select my walls. This would be similar to what was uh, occurring in, for example, Builder 2018 if we had the identical design strips set. So once I generate this set of strips, you're going to see that we're going to focus on this wall and this wall for the X direction. This support line stretches, and I'm going to go ahead and use a tool here to mark this up. So this support line stretches down and it actually cuts over that wall. And a lot of times that's not advantageous for the designer or the user because you want the ability for um, the program to report not only stresses for a PT slab on these sections, but also to calculate reinforcement for strength. And if a design cut extends over a wall, um, the program does neither of those two things. It only designs for minimum reinforcement because it assumes that the wall is a support and it's really just designing for faces of the support. So we may want to limit this design cut to extend to the wall but just barely with a gap to the face of the wall. And so by setting this as a boundary for the X direction strips that will actually happen. You can see this cuts over here and this cuts over from this direction here. And that's purely based on the division of tributary along this line. Half goes here, half goes there. You can see where we have a support line that's oriented along the path of the wall. That obviously is a true support for that support line. So we, in this case, we cut over the top of the wall. We probably would not set that as a, as a boundary for the X direction. Um, and then here where we have a wall that's near perpendicular to the direction or the spline or the support line, we have design cuts that are automatically generated at that location, at a support location. So let's now go ahead, clear out the design strips. I'm going to go back to the editor and under walls, I'm going to create an X boundary under user defined for this wall and this wall. We'll close that and I'll generate the section cuts again. I'll isolate X and you can see now that these cuts go up to the face of the wall but they don't extend into the wall. And that happens here as well as on this wall here. If we look at this wall here, nothing really happened there. We didn't set that as an X boundary and the same thing here. Now what we'll do is we'll come back We'll look at the outcome by setting those two also to X direction boundaries. I'll go back to wall, user defined. I'm going to use X only boundaries, set this to X only, and also this one here to X only. I'll regenerate the strips. And now you can see when I do that, this wall or the support line over that wall extends the section only to that location and that distance away from the face of both sides and the adjacent support lines extend up to that wall again with the, with the tiny gap um, built into the extension or built into the length of the support line. So this stretches all the way down to this wall here on both sides and that's another way to control um, how the tributaries are generated Again, because this wall is perpendicular, the program is still intersecting um, cuts over the wall. So the wall cuts or the, the section cuts on the outside of the wall will actually go and be limited by the face of the wall on that side. And you can also see down on this end right here. But there are still auto section cuts generated within the body of the wall. So that, that may not be as useful for this condition where the wall is near perpendicular to the support line. Let's go ahead now and we're going to go and toggle this to the, the other direction. Now we have the similar condition for this wall out in the middle between two support lines. If I, if I go back to the editor and I say, well, this is going to be a Y only boundary, this wall. Okay, and let's say this wall is also a Y only boundary. I'll now generate the section cuts. And you have something that's similar, just in the opposite direction. So we have this cut up to the face, near the face of the wall. 
and then over here we have the section limited over the width of the wall and then the two adjacent strips extend to the face face of that wall. If you have any questions about these new features, please contact us at support at adaptsoft.com.